Chicago. I call it the Godo. I don't like to call it Chicago because he got a bad name already. I, I was born and raised there. I found Muay Thai in Detroit, though. Not in Chicago. I was in Detroit visiting my families and everything, and I bumped into this cat named Terry. And he he was teaching he was teaching this crazy like form of karate or something in this in the gym. It's a powerhouse gym on Woodward. And I was like, I wanna learn that. And he taught me. And uh just walked up to the bag. He like, let me see you kick. And I was like, okay. And I kicked. He like, do it again. I kicked again. I do it again. I kicked again. He's like, yeah, the force is strong with you, young man. <laughs> Eventually, what I did was I found the gym called Top Notch in the Chicago area, right? So I literally lived in a gym. And I, I stayed doing that for about two, maybe three years. And then I came to Thailand. I feel like Muay Thai should be bigger than MMA in America. The reason why I feel like Muay Thai should be bigger than MMA in America is because it's one, it's been around longer. Two, it's, it's a little more exciting. Like, man, you get people, it's just, people want to see flashy, flashy attacks. People want to see knockouts. Knockouts rule the day. I don't care what you say, how you lay it down, how you slice it or cut it. Knockouts rule the day. Sometimes in MMA, it's not enough knockouts. Muay Thai fighting is theory. <laughs> Combat is As a fighter's fate would have it, a Chicago native who discovered Muay Thai in Detroit finds himself in the birthplace of the art he loves and eventually would come face to face with a warrior honed in the craft since childhood. <laughs> The most humiliating thing about coming over here into Thailand is coming over here as a foreigner and you thinking you know how to clinch. And you come over here and you, and to Thais, you big. Ah. You know, you like one, maybe 165. They might maybe like 125. And the smallest will start just pushing you around the ring, like literally backing you up, like putting hands on you, clinch down on you, and just start backing you up. Thank you like on skates. Thank you, bro. Like, hold on, I ain't no. Uh, you get up. Come even hard. He throw your ass again. Uh, freaking fly miles. You and this bitch like, uh, every time. They say half the battle is in the mind. So how do these fighters get into the right mental states? My typical day of training is like this. First thing I do, some call I like to call uh, morning master. So what I do is I get up, shake it off. Punching, kicking, I'm saying, imagine, imagine my opponent in front of me throwing kicks, flip, punch, kick, blah, 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 flip. In the ring, I get in the ring. In the ring, I shut off. Two take over. Once two take over, it's so cerebral. So he always thinking, he always calculating. You know what I mean? Everything he do got to it's a purpose. I can't be normal when I step in the ring. And the reason why you can't be normal when you step in the ring because it's not, it's, it's scary. Because you finna, you finna get in the ring with somebody who's trying to like hurt you. So, you. so my way of dealing with it was to create this song. Other individual, this other person, so he can paint the picture. He can be the Mozart. Two fighters from opposite sides of the world go head to head. One is American, one is Thai. Warren Stavone and Thai native Jin Rob Punkring. Born thousands of miles apart, yet brought together by a tradition thousands of years old. Go, round number one. Oh! Good body kick from Warren now. Looks like yeah. Warren might have woken up. That sight of blood's giving him a release of life here. Warren. 
Oh, Ty opponent almost coming out of the ring. Four. Winner! Red Corner! Jandro!